It's been 84 years. Or at least it felt like that. But we finally got our Valve Index, and here are my initial thoughts after spending the day with the new headset and controllers. If you just want my overall feelings and some pros and cons, see the timestamp in the description. If you want more in-depth impressions, check out the rest of the video. Now for reference, I currently own the Oculus Rift S, Oculus Quest, the original Vive, and the Vive Pro with wireless. First, we have the unboxing. I love the little references on the shipping box, but I think I'll have to keep this part out of the video. That is not safe for work. Right away you can tell that Valve has put some effort into the packaging. The boxes are sturdy and the stickers and embossed logo and lettering all share the index color gradient. Once you crack it open, you'll first notice the setup instructions. Even these, in a variety of languages, are amazing to look at. That's a great touch. And with the headset comes a microfiber cloth that I was really excited about for some reason. I mean, look at that beauty. I want to frame it. It's all these little extra touches that really add to the entire experience. Let's start with the knuckles, or sorry, the index controllers. They feel really good in the hand. The plastic material doesn't feel cheap, and whatever material they use for the straps and the foam on the headset is amazing. It's really soft and feels great against the skin. Putting on the controllers was relatively easy and there are two spots to adjust the fit. The bottom band can be pulled tighter and the top has a plastic arm that rotates back and forth, which brings your hand closer or further from the top of the controller. Overall, I found the controllers quite comfortable, even though I did feel pressure on the straps more than I thought I would. You need them quite tight to remove that feeling that you can throw them off. I have average size hands and I can reach all the buttons easily. The menu button is a bit more of a reach, but you won't be hitting that one much and now you can't do it accidentally. For the headset, the same quality of build was present. There are no creaking parts and everything moves back and forth smoothly without any wobble. That same foam material is present and feels so good on your face and it doesn't pull any hair on the backside. Putting on and off the headset is really easy, and once you have all your configuration set, you don't need to adjust it anymore. It's cool, you don't have to twist the knob or anything, you just pull the back up and you can take it off easily. It's definitely the most comfortable of all my headsets, even with the heavier weight, which is distributed quite well. That said, you'll still feel pressure on your face. We aren't quite past that point yet, but it's not nearly as much as prior headsets. The eye relief knob is a really cool feature. You can shove those lenses right up against your eyeballs to increase the field of view, but you will feel the plastic push against the bridge of your nose. For me, it was more than tolerable, but I can see it pushing quite hard on folks with larger noses and foreheads. I kept it about one click away from the max. Overall, the headset is really comfortable with easy to use mechanics and a very solid build. Setup was simple as I had my original Vive base stations already up and running. I did encounter an error that said the main cable was unplugged on the headset side. I checked and it was definitely firmly in there, but I pulled it out and plugged it back in. It was all clear since then. As soon as I entered my Steam home area, I was thrown a little. It was really blurry. But I adjusted the fit of the headset to find the sweet spot and once I had it, I was blown away. The clarity is stunning. From side to side on these lenses, you can make out most details without any blur or warping. Only on the edges could I see the distortions. It's really cool, especially with text. In terms of field of view, I wasn't blown away, but I was happy with it. The vertical increase is probably the most noticeable as it really cuts off the feeling of having that scuba mask on. And as you increase the horizontal field of view, you start making out the edges of the screen. It's only near peripherals, but it's something that may annoy different users. I was fine with it though, it's like a little black half circle right on the edge. It's, it's weird, but not bad. Now there were some cons with the visuals right away. The colors are definitely worse than my Vive Pro, uh, but not to the extent that I was expecting after reading a few of the early reviews. Colorful games like Arizona Sunshine look gorgeous. It's really just the darker areas punctuated with brighter colors that seem dull. It feels like the entire white balance was just a hair off, a bit too much on the blue side. The black levels aren't black, and you can tell, but it's nowhere near distracting and you still get the feeling of being in darkness. But probably the biggest downside I noticed right away was light reflections. And I don't mean god rays, because those weren't really noticeable, but it was like a weird halo of light around the edge of the lens when looking at bright objects. 
I don't really know how to explain this better, but the edges would just glow white, and I'd never really seen that before. It was distracting, but I got used to it as the games went along. But oh man, that audio is superb. These off-ear speakers are simply amazing. Wow! There have been people that said the volume was low, even at max, but in my case, I had to go about 40 to 50% in order to not have my ears blasted. Now, I'm not an audio snob by any means, but these are some of the best speakers I own now. And the fact that they aren't touching your ears really increases the immersion. You feel like sound is just there and you're in the room, and the directional capabilities are fantastic. So I booted up some games I knew had been patched for index controller support. First was Arizona Sunshine and Onward. The finger tracking was actually pretty spot on, even though with my grip my pinky and ring finger are basically touching each other. My middle finger was more hit and miss, but if I reached a little bit further up the controller with it, it would register totally fine. But with my natural grip, the middle finger was more hit and miss. Now I did end up hitting a few issues right away in the game. The joysticks on the controller click perfectly well when they're centered, but if you push them in a direction, it's suddenly impossible to click them in. For my left controller, those directions were up and down, and my right controller, left and right. In Arizona Sunshine, this meant that sprinting was basically impossible for me. It's something to keep an eye on. The other issue I found was the grip. Now, I'm used to a button being there on both the Vive and the Rift, but I thought that actually opening and closing my hand would be far more intuitive in terms of game mechanics but it wasn't, at least at first. I would constantly be dropping my gun or grabbing my hat when I didn't mean to, simply because my fingers would slightly open or close. Without the tactile feel that I was holding something down, I kept shifting my hand slightly and losing or dropping items. It's definitely something we'll get used to with more use, but it was noticeable. Everything else in the games was amazing. The clarity in Onward makes such a huge difference when targeting in the distance. Instead of shooting at moving blurs and pixels, you can actually see your targets clearly. It's a big advantage. In Beat Saber, the sound was utterly fantastic. It gave me a great sense of presence in a game where you normally don't get one, especially without those speakers on my ears. The sabers were a bit off for me, and that caused me to miss a few boxes I normally wouldn't, but you can adjust the saber position and angle with mods, so that probably won't be an issue for long. And not having to death grip the controllers will lend itself nicely to extended play. I also tried Beat Saber in 144Hz mode. You can feel how smooth it gets, but I was surprised it wasn't more noticeable. My main monitor is 144Hz, and I can easily tell the difference between that and 60 frames per second, but going from 90 to 144 wasn't as large a jump. I don't think this will be a killer feature, but it's definitely a nice bonus for those with a really beefy graphics card. The hype for the Valve Index was unprecedented. We had a new entry into VR from a company known for quality and really pushing tech. Coming from those expectations, I was underwhelmed with the Index. It's an improvement for sure, with very little compromise, but it's not the giant leap that many were hoping for. But if you can afford it, this is the VR system to own, hands down. I'm going to miss wireless, but I will be sticking with the Index for most, if not all, future games. Here's my final list of pros and cons. Pros. The comfort. The material is amazing, and the weight distribution is perfect. The hand controllers can get a little tight, but overall felt really good. Optics. The clarity. Oh my gosh, the clarity. You can just see everything really well. Once you find that sweet spot, which isn't gigantic, but it's not bad. You, you just, you'll be blown away, I promise. Build quality. From the materials chosen to just how it's all connected, nothing feels wobbly or weak and everything is just really well done. Refresh rate options. It's not a huge deal, but just having the option to go from 80, 90, 120, and 144 is a bonus. Can't fault that. Audio. Oh man, those speakers. I, I can't explain it to you how much I love them. Not having them touch my ear but still have such good quality and such directional capabilities is a game changer, 100%. Controllers, in the games that have updated for them. The controllers I feel are going to be the biggest hit and miss part of the Valve Index. For some games, they'll work perfectly, especially games that already have a, a Rift Touch capability because the controls will uh, translate much better. 
but games originally designed for just the Vive, it's going to be tougher. The, the controls are just mapped really weird, it's, it's not perfect, things are awkward, and I'm going to give it more time to update on that side. Cons. The colors. Yes, they're not as good as you'll get on an OLED screen, like the Vive Pro, but they're good. They're still bright, it's fine, everything looks really vibrant, it's just not as good. Weird light reflections. This one really threw me for a loop because I wasn't expecting it. It's not god rays because you don't see it coming off the object, it's just like a halo around the lens of brightness. It's weird, and I'm not sure what it is. The controllers with games not updated for them. I've already touched on this, but I think it'll be an issue for a while. And a part of that is joystick clicking. It's a big deal because a lot of games have that map where you need to click in either the trackpad or the joystick, and right now you just can't do it on these controllers. And the price. It's a thousand dollars for the entire kit, and that's a lot. It's not big enough jump, in my opinion, to warrant that cost. It's close, and if you can afford it, 100% go for it. It's definitely an upgrade over everything else, but I think you could probably stick with a much, much cheaper Rift S, for example, and still have a great VR experience. All right, guys, that's my initial impressions on the Valve Index. I'm going to be using this a lot with a lot of videos coming up with different games and stuff, so keep checking it out. Thanks for watching.